The God-Mind Connection, Chapter 10, Finding Our Identities Again. A History of the Spirit Entities Who Separated from God and the Freedom to Choose God or to Reject Him. God is good. All that God creates is good. Furthermore, God is incapable of creating anything except good. These basic concepts the Brotherhood puts forth through God-Mind form the basis of all understanding about God as explained in this book. According to these advanced spirits, it is the touch of God-mind that wakes us to the truth that God has to give us. They say that touching this God-mind gives us much that we could not possibly know in and of ourselves. Even this brotherhood cannot get this truth except by God-mind, they insist. In this chapter, these teachers explain why the spirit entities departed from God-mind and went instead into earthly bodies to seek the truth. God, wondrous God, thought to make the universe a truly good place. Bright spirits moved freely in the vastness of the galaxy. These spirits had the power that was true, the power that gave them mastery themselves. But many did not recognize this self-mastery as the epitome of truth. They believed that energy was, was withheld from them, so they decided to give themselves further mastery by experimenting with the beasts that they created on this earth. Therefore, they entered into these beasts, indulging themselves in mating, in eating, in the outrageous idea that they were indeed the master of all. As a result, they became trapped within these creatures. The nothingness that they became was absolute. They submerged themselves into animal form and lost their ability to use the energy of the universe. They were encased in these bodies, and they could not withdraw. What kept them from withdrawing, I wondered? Was God punishing them because they were disloyal? The truth of the matter is that God became the gentle one who tried to free these spirits, but they pouted and entered completely into the body truth. They wanted God to give them plenty of energy, forgetting that all energy enters a spirit when that spirit reaches out for it. The mind is the key, not the generosity of God. There was such an outcry, such terrible confusion on earth. The animals destroyed themselves in order to become free spirit entities again. When they were free, they thought the whole experience not so bad after all. They laughed, and they united with other like-thinking spirit entities. They re-entered earth life in the same revolting way. They threw away their divinity to become animals, and at this point they teamed up to become the first earth mind. Into this collective earth mind they put their own truth. They believed that the God of whom they were a part was not the real God. They gave themselves more and more to the energy of their own making, to the mind of their own making. The spirit entities thus became encased in animal form, and their only freedom came at their death. That is the way they lived, losing more and more of their God energy, until they no longer even considered the God of the universe. The cries from earth were many. The outrage they felt of their predicament was terrible. The thrust of their thoughts was that they were not responsible. The God they thought up, the God of whatever, taught them nothing. The God of whatever did not touch their lives. The God of their own creation gave them no comfort, no thought to encourage them. They believed they were abandoned and gave themselves up to hopelessness. Because they gave themselves up to hopelessness, even their death no longer freed them. They thought they were trapped no matter where they were. In this next plane of life, their poor concept continued. They clustered together according to the growth patterns they had developed, and they filled themselves with more untruth. Therefore, when they returned to earth, they went without plan and without hope. They returned simply to return, because there was nothing else to do. These persons encased within animals were the most miserable of the thought forms on earth. They touched themselves with the idea that there was no other way. Therefore, they found no other way. Their thoughts on the second plane of life brought forth whatever they believed, you see. Therefore, they could learn nothing of the true predicament they were in. The God of the universe touched their lives, however. This God, whose principle is goodness, urged the other spirit entities to go to those on earth to reclaim them. Them came the creation of man, the wonderful creature with the brain that could use the guide mind available to all. This creature was beautiful beyond compare. The spirit entities took these forms into light. They worked to perfect them, to become the worthy thought forms and expression. These true spirits brought order to earth. They corralled the beasts that were inhabited by spirit entities, those who had entered themselves in that debased fashion. The true spirits spoke to them and told them who they were in reality. The beasts listened, saddened by the truth, but nevertheless given hope for better times. 
they began to think differently. They began to understand the truth that they were really offshoots of the wonderful God of the universe. They tried to improve their lot. They, man and beast, took concern over the creation problems. They took the truth they knew, established them upon the earth, and they began to separate man from beast. The God's selves that had inhabited the beast began to leave, some by death, some by using the principle of truth. At this point of the story, I fervently hoped that mankind began a positive chapter. However, those spirits that originally inhabited and then were trapped in animal bodies had not learned much. As those in the Brotherhood might say, they had developed no growth. They re-entered life again, this time as women and men. When they returned, they frolicked even more, having taught themselves very little, it seems. They even took themselves into the beast to interlock with them and began a terrible turn of events. The mixing of human form with the animal, this turn of events brought further entrapment. But those who entered into the offspring suffered beyond measure. The men and women brought them into subjugation, into slavery, and into the position of not being able to reproduce. They had to make some of these creatures into men or women by taking the tails away or the tusk of the hoof, whether it was that made the man less than man. But the principle was finally established that no person could mate with an animal. Then this species of half-human and half-animal died out. At this time the truth entered into the mind of mankind that the man-woman creatures were the truth of God implanted within the beautiful bodies. The recognition began the period of worship, but not the end of division, the division between people and God. The truth of all this story is that the spirit entities that were one with God chose to leave this bliss to become creatures, and later to become the women and men of earth. These spirit entities were the ones that taught the rest of the spirits that earth is theirs in the fullness thereof. This earth, they said, is ours, not God's. This earth gives us our truth, our bounty, our sustenance. This earth belongs to us and gives us abundance. They appointed leaders. The leaders formed tribes. These tribes dispersed over the world. This time, the poor truth, that the earth gave them everything, opened them to the earth's collective mind, and turned them away from the light that would have come through the God mind. It is at this point in the development of man, according to the Brotherhood, that recorded history begins. However, the history of mankind's progress back to truth, back to the oneness of God, is recorded for the reader by the brotherhood through God-mind. The improved concept of God the thought finally turned the tribes towards a light. This God the thought gave them hope of eternal truth to help them team up with what was good, what was productive, what was true. They began to develop concepts of God that grew into the various religions that cover the earth. They took some light, they took some of their traditions, and they took something from enlightened leaders. They put together their religion, a belief system that encompassed what they felt and what they thought. Their religion led them to express the God that they knew in gentle ways or harsh ways, depending on the tradition they had. Each tribe wanted its religion to be dominant. That way their truth was based on strength. The one who could outfight the others became the most powerful. The powerful truth was demonstrated by the powerful tribe. Women received poor reception into these tribes because they are not wonderful warriors. Therefore, to enter into life as a woman was the least desirable position possible. The men and the boys were the ones who got tender attention. Strength was also important. That old age and loss of power meant it was time for death by natural means or by killing the old and the weak. These customs and others gave people order, but it taught them nothing that would bring them into oneness with God. Then the God of the universe sent enlightened spirits among them to live. The tribesmen either had to deny what they saw in the way of demonstration and by the way of example, or they had to accept the truth that was obvious to everyone. In this way, the tribes slowly prospered in the truth. As truth began to manifest, the beginnings of true prosperity began. Prosperity in growth, prosperity in the quality of life, prosperity in terms of creativity. These changes took place so that prosperity might demonstrate the God mind in operation. This God mind they began to tap took people into a truth that would bring them oneness with God. The truth that people began to learn informed them that there is an open channel by which they may learn of the higher consciousness, this God mind. Teaming up with the Brotherhood brought them into the open channel, the means by which they could unite with God mind. This way people opened their minds to the truth that God had for them. Now the earth mind began to diminish in importance, and the earth people began to turn to God mind for their wisdom, their truth, their beautiful thoughts. 
the God self that had been so terribly distorted awakened to the possibilities. The entire earth awakened to beauty. The spirit entities that inhabited the bodies enlarged their concept of themselves, the God they worshipped in their truth. God mind led them to a burning ambition for goodness in life, in beauty, and in music. At last they turned themselves toward the light. The truth of their being teamed up with a brotherhood to invade the entire earth. But not all was as smooth as it sounds. Power struggles continued as despots sought influential positions. Some turned toward the darkness of life as they turned back to the God of whatever, which is, of course, a very poor concept of God. Nevertheless, life in general progressed. God mind flourished once it found the light, and nothing could ever put it in total darkness again. On this hopeful note, those who brought these words turned their attention to the present time, to earth life, and the ever-demanding need of people to solve their problems. People must understand the past in order to understand the present. People must know the beginning of the spirit's troubles in order to understand the way to become free of them. This time of existence is the time of the choice, a time for turning to the light of turning toward the darkness. To become one with God, there is only one choice, the light. There is no such thing as a little darkness. There is only the choice between light and dark, between the purity of God or troubled existence. A choice exists because the God of the universe opens our eyes to the truth so that we see more clearly than we once did. The truth brings us the entire spectrum of the brightness that obliterates the evil intentions that produce a troubled existence. The truth is obvious to many that the choice is ours today to use or misuse this plan on earth life. Earth life can become one with God, a paradise of a kind in material form, or it can become the boiling cauldron of hate that solidifies the atmosphere and chokes life away. Truth begins in the truth that God is. Truth finds root in the belief of men and women. Truth finds growth in the use of the powerful energy that God gives on request. Truth takes its sustenance from the practice of it by more and more of the God selves that inhabit human body. This tremendous truth grows into the vastness of everlastingness by turning the planet Earth into the truth and expression, the good place God intended in the beginning. I asked why all people don't recognize the divinity within them, why so many people live hopeless lives. Even today there on Earth come the cries of spirit entities who are trapped in man-women bodies. These entities cry out to be free, to find the peace of God to express their truth. Because they take themselves to the human collective mind instead of the God mind, they turn themselves inside out. They express in the physical only and forget the entire truth of the spirit that is rooted in the vastness of God. They creep when they might fly. They starve when they might feast. They become savages when they might become creative geniuses. The greatness of this God of ours cannot be told here. This word or that word will not hold the possibilities. The God of the greatness of the universe will not stay to be painted. God will not place his entity into an object nor a person. God has the wonderful strength, goodness, purity, the only positive force that generates itself by the single touch of the God mind. But how, I wondered aloud, do human beings keep away the multitude of negative thoughts that pour into them from the collective human mind? How do we resist that which men and women have accepted as truth since the beginning of recorded history and before? Just how do we touch this God mind that has the answers to all questions and that has the substance to fill all our needs? To become one with God, you must empty your ego entirely. This empty ego will hold to the truth that God gives you the only truth worth having and the only truth that you want. The collective human mind then touches you no more than a fly who lights only to be shooed away. You must understand this truth concerning your ego, for only you can empty it. Your ego empties of its own will, not through force. There is never force. There is always free will. There are many who believe that God should step in and take over against the free will of the spirit entities that inhabit the bodies. This principle that people must have free will cannot and will not be overridden, however. The reason for this principle is that there is no positive force, no goodness, unless this goodness comes from willingness, the will that determines to do something. When a person has a willingness to have God express in his life, then a great explosion comes within that spirit. The explosion is the energy of God expressing. 
the good that comes explodes into being. This tremendous force we speak of is a natural consequence of the good expression that comes through the free will of individuals. God is there, but everyone has the choice of accepting the great power or rejecting it. We in this brotherhood have made our choice for this God of the universe, this God of truth. This choice must be made by each individual, not by the God of the universe. The individual has free will to create his own being, his own world to live in. This truth abides in the open channel we provide, takes the truth of God to you to use or not to use. This is our good message. Take the truth of God that you may prosper, that you may find your life easy, that your good will manifest, thus proving to you that God who loves you will be your teammate forever. Some Thought Stimulators 1. Earth Mind is our collective human consciousness developed from our history on Earth. Now is the time for choice, we are told. What is your understanding of choice as it applies to your life? 2. Our God truth begins when we recognize our divinity within and accept the truth of what God is. We have a choice between earth mind and God mind. How can the choice of God mind bring us into oneness with God? 3. The only positive substance that fills our needs is generated by God mind. We can become one with God mind by emptying our ego. What is involved in emptying our ego and who must empty the ego? Inner Work that which God is does not take charge of our lives. We have free will. Therefore, when we call for our God-mind connection, we call for power. Note the difference between calling for God power and expecting God to direct your life. Invite the brotherhood to assist you. Use God energy to accomplish greatness in your life. End of chapter.